Welcome to Education Beat. I'm Ann Vasquez, CEO of EdSource. First year college students began school this year with a lot stacked against them. While some moved away from home for the first time, most had to face a tough reality. COVID robbed them of learning, especially in math, after more than a year of attending high school from home. Math has just been really hard, especially in senior year. Uh, Pre-calculus just ate me up. I had to switch out so my GPA would still look nice. How are college freshmen doing this school year? And how are colleges working to help them? Here is this week's Education Beat with host Zadie Stabley. Victor Contreras is really excited to be at college, on his own and far from his hometown in Elk Grove near Sacramento. I picked San Diego State because it was the farthest from Elk Grove uh, while still being in the state. Uh, I'm, I was just, I was sick of being in a small town um, and I wanted to get away. He's found his new home beautiful. I was looking at the hills they have. There was these hills with houses on them on the sides. It was very beautiful. I was like, that's exactly what I want to look at all the time. And um, I get to, um, in, the art, in the art building over here, you get to see uh, the, the freeway and the houses. It's just insanely beautiful. And so, yeah, my first impression was this is a very beautiful city. He's also loving some of his classes. My communications class, I like doing the speeches. It's very entertaining, this last one I did. Um, my astronomy classes are nice. I'm not doing too good in the bigger class but uh, I am mean, going to the study hours for that. Um, uh, but my art classes are what is my, my main focus is. But Victor's a little worried about next semester. That's when he'll have a math class. It's an introductory course, which is what he tested into. But math has been difficult for Victor ever since he fell behind during the pandemic. I was going on a good roll. I was doing pretty good. And then COVID hit. And then I didn't really recover from that. This is Education Beat, getting to the heart of California schools. I'm Zadie Stavely. This week, college freshmen take on math after COVID delays. Before schools closed during the pandemic, Victor says he was getting mostly A's and B's in math. But when school went online, Victor, like a lot of other students, had a hard time keeping up and paying attention. I, I barely concentrated in that class. I was present, I was there, I interacted, but for the most part, I wasn't present. I may or may not have had another window open. Uh, take that as you will. Uh, um, I'm not confessing to anything. Um. When Victor went back to in-person instruction senior year, his math grades dropped to mostly C's and D's. Uh, pre-calculus just ate me up. So hopefully next semester, I'll be able to keep it up. Hopefully, uh, get some sort of help. Victor's not alone. It turns out many first-year college students are really struggling to catch up academically this year after the pandemic wreaked havoc on their high school years. My colleague Diana Lambert wrote about this for EdSource. Hi, Diana. Hi, Zadie. How are you? I'm good. Um, so can you tell me you know, what you found? Yes, I've been following a group of 12 first-year college students, and a good majority of them are saying that they're struggling with math because of knowledge gaps, things they didn't learn in high school during distance learning. And so now they're on campuses trying to, to navigate that loss of knowledge. And so what's basically the reason why people are, are having such trouble with math? Well, it, it's because during the uh, distance learning, they didn't learn everything they would have generally learn during in-person teaching. So there are, there are things they didn't get to know, and now they go into college and they have to go to say calculus, and they aren't able to catch up because math is one of those things that builds. You have to learn one foundational step to move on to the next one. So they're missing some of the steps along the way. You spoke with one student, um, Jennifer Tran, who kind of gave you a, a sense of the scope of this um, and what it looks like at UC Berkeley. Can you kind of share what she shared? Jennifer Tran is a student representative on the Academic Senate Committee that deals with enrollment and, and admissions. And she, so she has a, a front 
court seat to what's going on and what the professors are talking about. And they're saying that the students are, are really missing some knowledge when it comes to math. And they're not really ready for the introductory college preparation courses, the college math courses. She's what was considered a lower level math course in the past is now considered the norm. So courses that were lower level math courses before are now just like the average introductory classes now. So um, they're trying to figure out ways to catch them up. And one of the things they're doing at Berkeley is they, first they sent out a survey just to kind of see where kids are with math. And then they're offering these three week courses in the fall and in the summer before school starts, before the next term, so they can get them caught up on everything they don't know. So they're prepared for the courses that they're taking. Do you think this is happening kind of across the board? Oh, absolutely. I think absolutely. Schools across the board are seeing problems uh, with students not being prepared for math, and they're trying to get them caught up as quickly as they can. I think that's everywhere. Um, and so tell me more about what the different colleges are doing about this. Well, UC Merced has a similar program to uh, UC Berkeley. They have the summer and the winter term to get kids ready. But they also are doing some interesting things and in offering recordings before each new foundational step within the math classes. So you have a math class and they're going to teach uh, a, a new foundational step in calculus. And so they offer recordings in advance so kids can see if they're caught up and ready to learn that next step. They're trying to catch them up as they go. Okay. And what about California State University? California State University is updating its early start program, which is something they already have in place to get kids in high school ready to go to college to make sure they're up to date. They're just updating it with the goal of having 90% of the students ready to have a successful first year in math. How long do you think that the difficulties with math will continue? Do you think this is something that just happened with a pandemic? And now that, you know, for, for the current high school seniors, maybe it'll be easier? Or do you think that this is something that it's like the new norm for college? No, I think it's a pandemic related thing. Any kids who lost a year of, of school will struggle with math because math is just one of those subjects that needs to build. I did talk to a professor, the vice provost and mathematician, her name is Sarah Fry from UC Merced. And she said, as soon as she, the pandemic closed school, she knew immediately this was gonna be a problem when it came to math. And they started immediately looking to see what they would do. So I think any kid who lost a year of math during the pandemic is gonna struggle. And it's just gonna depend on whether the schools and tutors, et cetera, can get them caught up. So it could continue to be a problem if kids never catch up, if they have lost that step and are never able to catch up again. As a nonprofit organization, EdSource depends on donations and grants to sustain our quality journalism. We rely on listeners like you. Between now and December 31st, EdSource has a goal to raise $100,000 to support our journalism. Make your donation today at edsource.org. Even though Victor Contreras is worried about having to take math in college next semester, he has learned a few things in his first semester at San Diego State. Just like go to office hours and office hours does help. I had a, a pretty bad uh, score on my second astronomy test. And then I went to office hours for the second one, for the third one. And then on the third one, I got a pretty good grade. They helped a ton with help uh, understanding the concepts and all that. It was really good. I liked it. Did, I was really proud of myself for going there. And I showed the TA and she was, she was really happy too. So he has some hope that his math class won't be all bad. I'll try talking to the professor a lot too, ask for help. So I have high hopes myself uh, just to be better, you know. Victor's also just learning how to live on his own. Just being out here on my own, it's really nice. It's, um, you know, figuring out how to do things myself, uh, I think... Yeah, just doing it's nice. Just being out by myself is nice. Doing my laundry is nice. Seeing, you know, figuring out that if I don't fold my clothes, it's going to be really messy in my, uh, in my dresser. So <laughs> I'm learning to fold my clothes because my dad said, you got to fold your clothes. <laughs> uh, what I'm looking forward to is just getting better. <laughs> uh, getting better at handling all this. All the students Diana's following are learning something new this year. Gannon Peoples is at uh, Columbia University in New York, 
and he is a math major and a, and a, a computer science major. And of course, he's excelling in math, but he's really struggling in some of the other classes. And when I say struggling, that means he's getting B's instead of the A's he's used to getting. He's a straight A student. But um, he was surprised to find college was so difficult. He's used to just going to class and doing his homework and not studying and getting A's. And he went to Columbia and found out that didn't work and started getting B's. So now he's learned that he has to study. And this is one of the things that these kids are learning as they go into college. They're, they're learning that it's not always as easy as high school. And quite a few of the students said they were surprised how difficult school is in college. Um, what about uh, students who you know went to community college oh. instead of um, four years? Well, we have uh, quite a few students that went to community college. And a lot of students are choosing community college because of the pandemic, I found that they had some anxiety. Um, Tamia Williams from Sacramento is going to American River College and she uh, wants to be a nurse. So she wants to transfer to a four-year university, but right now she just doesn't feel that that would be comfortable for her. She has some anxiety since the pandemic and she wants to stay close to home. So she's going to American River College and doing well. She's, she's getting A's, but and eventually will transfer to a four-year university. Um, and you spoke with somebody who uh, just decided to take some time off, right? Yeah, Musa Awadat. So Musa wants to go to Santa Rosa to go to community college, but Santa Rosa is really expensive. And he's looked into getting some roommates, but he still thinks it's too expensive and he can't afford it. So he's sitting and he's at Clear Lake deciding what to do next. And um, the other option for him is government work. His father would like him to become a postman or do something in the government where he can get a pension. But Musa just can't decide. So Musa took advantage of the time off and he and his family went to Egypt. His, his parents are Egyptian. He's never been to Egypt. So he went there to visit family and family friends. And uh, that was an adventure. So he's taking, a, it's not, I wouldn't call it a gap year, but he's taking some time off to travel and decide what he wants to do. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add, Diana? The only thing that, you know, really struck me in this is that along with the struggles that students are facing academically and socially, leaving home, there's a great deal of joy at this newfound independence that they are finding. You know, after the pandemic, being stuck in the house for a year and all of a sudden now going to going to a new place and having new adventures. You know, we have Gannon Peoples in New York riding the subway just to go anywhere, just to stand on 58th Street, just to to look at New York that, you know, and Victor Contreras is in San Diego riding his bicycle down the coast and just loving life. You know, he said, I'm in it for the ride. And, he, you know, and um, Nicholas Harvey at Stanford, just like going to every panel he can go to. And he goes to these language tables where the kids just pick a table and then learn Italian for the evening from other students, you know, or you can go to the Spanish table. I mean, I think that the joy that they're finding uh, at these universities, it, you know, it, it's pretty wonderful. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Education Beat, getting to the heart of California schools, a production of EdSource. You can find Diana's story at edsource.org. Our producer is Kobe McDonald. Special thanks to our guests, Victor Contreras and Diana Lambert. Our CEO is Ann Baskus. Our theme music is from Blue Dot Sessions. This episode was brought to you by the Kresge Foundation. I'm Zadie Stavely. Join me next week and subscribe so you won't miss an episode.